Hi, I'm park guide Jason Howell. I'm standing here in front of the Moores Creek Visitor Center. I have the Visitor Center sign behind me. I'm wearing a green ranger jacket and a tan ranger hat. And we welcome you to our virtual anniversary. As we talk about the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge, we talk about patriots and loyalists, and we talk about them fighting here on the battlefield. But there's other patriots and other loyalists in the area. Um, here, right down the road, in Wilmington, North Carolina, there's a lot of history. The city was founded in 1739, so there's a lot of history down there. And you can actually go down to Wilmington to a place um, called the Bergwin Wright House, who has a little connection to our battle. I'm not going to get into that. We're actually going to go to the Bergen Wright House and I'm going to let the director and a friend and colleague of mine, Christine Lamberton, talk a little bit about John Bergwin and the Bergen Wright House and how it is connected to the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge. Welcome to the Bergen Wright House and Gardens. My name is Christine Lamberton. I'm the director of the museum. The Bergen Wright House and Gardens is one of the oldest and largest property in downtown Wilmington. Our gardens and three of our buildings date back to 1744 when this was the first city jail of Wilmington. Wilmington was about four years old and this is one of the first buildings the city chose to erect here on the corner of 3rd and Market. The house dates to 1770. Once the jail is decommissioned, John Bergwin purchases the property and builds his house made of longleaf pine on top of the remaining jail walls. I'm currently standing in John Bergwin's parlor one of the busiest social rooms in this house. John Bergwin worked for the King of England. He was a secretary to three royal governors and the treasurer for the colony. He was born in England to a wealthy merchant family who suggested as a second born son that he set sail to the new world and set up a leg for their business, essentially making trade across the Atlantic for his family's business. And at the eve of the revolution, he found himself in a very interesting um, situation. He was born and raised in England, he worked for the crown, but he was the head of the militia here and he had keys to the armory. He was also a merchant who relied on trade, but through marriage, a planter who owned three plantations and at the peak of his wealth, a hundred enslaved people. So his loyalties were divided and he found himself in that gray area of staying loyal to his country of birth and his king and his business assets here. And from what we understand, John Bergwin was one of many men who tiptoed that fine line as long as possible. But it is apparent to us now that he was loyal to his king, went back to England during the revolution. And upon his return where he was trying to get pardoned and get his properties back, was tried for selling gunpowder to what they suspect were loyalists who may have fought at Morse Creek. His trial took several years and he eventually did get a pardon and that kind of closed his political career here in the colonies, although he continued thriving as a planter and a local merchant. We hope that when you stop by Morse Creek on one of your visits to the area, you'll come by the Bergen Wright House. We're open Monday through Saturday between 10 and 4.